Hey everybody, um, so it looks like those videos from our last class, um, I don't think they uploaded because I couldn't find them in the media section on Slate, so I, I think there still might be some issues with my Kultura. I know they recorded those, so they're probably on my, my local system. Unfortunately, I can't access them from home. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just do a very short, abbreviated recording on the uh, things we talked about just in terms of getting your files out of your textures out of substance and then applying them to the uh, uh, the object in in Maya so got the tank uh, again what we need to do is load in the redshift metal roughness export settings and that was in that week five folder I gave you um, I think I have it in a slightly different location here. So add resources. I don't know. Do I have a week five folder on my, I think I might not have replicated that here. So let's see. Systems. Yeah, I don't think I've got a week five folders, copies of some stuff. Uh, but I should have that. Here it is right here. And there's a copy of it too. But it's this guy. Again, that's in that week five folder. Uh, just right in the root of that folder, so Redshift Metal Rough, SP, EXP. So again, uh, we did talk about this in the last class. Let me open that up. It's going to go into Export, that's right, and just make sure you're setting it to the shelf, and then Import, and you're good. Um, I've already imported mine in here, so I don't want to have a duplicate version, so I'm just going to cancel that. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is export all of our our textures so under file we're going to go down to export textures or you can use the hotkey control shift e you'll see all your udems here you can change your file sizes so you can see here uh, one of them i ended up going with 4k that was probably uh, this portion here just because it's bigger than some of the other other pieces that included these side side bits here as well um, just know that it's going to take a little bit longer um, the higher the resolution it's going to be. Next thing you want to do is make sure you're choosing the source images directory. So again, that's going to be here. So tank. Um, but before we go and export this, we do have to also go into configuration. So I'm going to go configuration. And we are going to be using that metal rough uh, configuration. So I'm going to go down to uh, where it is right here, metal rough. This is a copy, uh, so that's not what I want though. I want this one. Now I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here that uh, we don't need. So let me just get rid of that. And we don't need a missive, get rid of that. Um, let me see here. Image occlusion, yeah, we don't need that. So I, I think these are the default ones right here. So diffuse color, normal, roughness, metallic. We are going to be adding height, so to do that again, um, what you do is you come up here to create, uh, and we're creating a grayscale. Height is grayscale information. Uh, black being, uh, well, typically black is just level, and then white is being pushed out, but the way this is being exported is that 50% gray is level, black is being pushed in, and white is being pulled out. Uh, because we're using an 8-bit or 16-bit texture size. If we're using 32 bits, uh, then we can get it in negative color. So black would be zero, white would be pulled out, and then negative black would be uh, pushed in. But again, that's something we'll talk about more with ZBrush. So we need height, that's gonna be our displacement. So we have our input maps over here. I'm gonna select height with my left mouse button and drag it onto where this is GR, and we're choosing the gray channel. You can see I've made the connection. Uh, these colors will be random. Mine's green, but I noticed at the school it was purple. Again, don't worry about that. It's just showing the connection between the two. Uh, and we just have to make sure we also give it a name so that it takes on the UDEM file uh, naming conventions. So I'm just going to copy. Uh, I'm just going to copy this one here, and just replace the word metallic with height. All right, so that's ready to go. So we would just go back over to export and just ensure you're choosing the uh, metal rough so that's the redshift metal rough now the reason why i clicked away and i'm clicking back on it again is just so that it'll refresh uh, and give me all the the maps that we want 
And then once you've done that, you just click export. So obviously I've already exported these maps, so I'm not gonna wait five minutes for it to do it again. I'm just gonna go over to Maya and we'll make our connections. So let's go over to Maya. Uh, don't mind my messy desktop. I have to organize it soon. All right, so in Maya, just make sure your project's set properly. So I'll set it to tank. Maybe tank was a recent project. So let's see if I can just go down to recent projects. Uh, do I have tank here? Sure, Raptor, uh, Raptors, Lioness, Gorilla, tank. There you are. So let me select that. And I'm gonna open. So again, I'll just start fresh. So I'm just gonna import that FBX. So import. And I want to import the FBX, which is, I don't know which one. And I think these might be slightly different. And then we'll try, that's 2018. The UVs are laid out a little bit differently there. There it is. All right, so let me import that. I'm gonna have to double check the uh, file of, or the uh, UV tiles as well, the UDEMS. I noticed that it, it's not importing. If you ever get that issue, it's probably because the plugin isn't turned on. So you just have to go to settings, preferences, plugin manager, and about uh, you know three quarters of the way down, uh, you're gonna see uh, the FBX. Now it is, it is turned on. So maybe I click open instead of import. Let's try this again import there we go there we go all right so we did talk a little bit about the hypershade in the class so just just very briefly uh so i've got my hypershade running out of real estate so i'm just gonna maybe try to reduce this or shift it over just a little bit here or maybe what i'll do is i'll just hit Control spacebar to make this a little bit bigger so i can move that over a bit all right, so I'm gonna create a Redshift material. So I'm gonna click on the word Redshift and grab materials. There we are. Um, let's give it a name. So we've got, we'll call this one tank, underscore MTL. And this is the shading group. So tank, underscore SGR. Uh, to apply, to apply this, we mentioned, you know, you could apply it to the group itself, uh, or you could just do a rectangle select over your objects and select them that way. Uh, or you can just drag and drop it onto your objects to apply it that way. Um, but essentially, if you have everything selected or the group selected, uh, just right click on your object on the material and go assign material to viewport selection. And that will assign that. Um, I'm gonna do an launch my IPR, so let's see here. I should also create a, um, um, just something for my reflections and refractions. So let me grab a dome light. And again, I mentioned uh, how you can bookmark um, where your HDRI images are just by middle dragging and dropping your folder over to this folder bookmarks. So it just makes it easy to reselect. Now, as long as Maya doesn't crash, this will always be there. Um, so let me see here. So which one's that? Yeah, it looks kind of cool. There's some shadows and stuff. All right, so next thing I wanna do is start adding my, my file textures in. So as I mentioned, file textures are under 2D textures file, uh, but we can also just go over here into our viewport and type, hit the tab key and just type in file. The one we want is file texture. The other ones are forms of projection. So we want something that'll wrap to our UVs that we've created. All right. And I'm going to um, make my connection. So first things first, uh, we're gonna go into our file texture and we're gonna load this in. So uh, so everything's 
organized by the UDEM number, so 1001. So this is the first tile and then all of the textures associated. Then we have the second tile, so on and so forth. I think there are six tiles in total. So I'm gonna select the diffuse color. There it is, and open. Uh, so I'm going to attach it. Now there's a couple ways to attach things. The quickest way I find is just having your material selected and then not left clicking on the uh, file texture because left clicking will switch uh, your attributes to the texture. So again, having the material selected, holding down the middle mouse button, so the scroll wheel, and then just dragging this onto the attribute you want to attach it to. And we're just dragging it and dropping it on the name. So there we go, that's connected. So you can see it's applied that to everything, including the ground. So for the tiles to work, because right now it's just the one tile repeating on everything, we gotta go into that file texture and we have to turn on UDEM. So file texturing mode, we've gotta turn on UDEMs, Mari. There we go, so now everything's the right thing. And also color space, sRGB, this is the only file that will have sRGB. Everything else will be set to raw, but for a color, sRGB is what we want. All right, let me do this again. So we're just gonna repeat this process um, a couple times, so type in file, grab my file texture, do roughness next. So grab this, grab roughness, there you are. And we're gonna throw that into the roughness channel. Uh, so we do have to change a couple settings on the um, on the shader for this to be exactly like the um, um, what we've done in in Substance Painter. So for BRDF, we're going to be using GGX. Um, and I told Young I'd look that up. I haven't yet, so it's still going to be done. And for null type, we're going to switch it from the refractive index to metalness because we're using the metal roughness workflow. There we are, so, which is the PBR workflow. And then what we're going to do is take that file texture and uh, nope, we're going to create a, a new texture now. So file texture. Now we're going to add in our metalness. Metallic. Uh, one thing I didn't do on the roughness is turn on the UDEMs, and we also have to switch this to raw, as I mentioned. Okay, let's do the same thing for, and you can see how it's it's modified this quite a bit. It's not quite as shiny. It's more like how we had created it. Uh, so now let's do um, metallic. So again, we want to turn on UDEMs, set this to raw. Drag that onto the word metalness. There we go, metallic goes to metalness. Perfect. Um, next thing we're gonna do is the displacement map. Uh, so let me grab one more file texture. Now for the displacement, we're using the height. I know I have displacement in here, but I was just experimenting. Uh, height is what we need, so open that. And again, we're going to be going to UDEMs, raw. And this is going to go under the shading group under the redshift tab. There's a displacement shader here. So we just drag and drop that onto there. Now nothing's going to happen until we go into um, the object. And we have to turn on under the redshift tab. So under the shape node, uh, where is it? Redshift, there you are. We have to enable tessellation and displacement uh, for each. So you can see that that's puffed up now, so it's done that. So we're gonna have to do that for every piece of geometry. There's like six pieces of geometry, I think. Just make sure you're clicking on both tessellation and the displacement which I wasn't doing, I was just clicking on displacement. All right, so that is there. Uh, so now we can go into our displacement node uh, that gets created when you attach your texture into that tab on the shading group. And we're gonna tweak these settings. Now it's funny because 
I got it almost exact with group A. Um, the group B ones, we were kind of uh, fussing around with stuff a little bit. So first of all, let's reduce the scale down. So I'll go down to 0.1. So that's looking better already. <clears throat> and then we need to shift this over. So I'm gonna go negative five to positive 0.5, negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. And let's see what we get now. And what did I do? Oh, negative five. Yeah, so that's really kind of sucking everything in there. So that's too much. So let's go negative 0.5, as I was saying. And that's almost exactly right, I think, um, in terms of the amount of height. Now that's not enough height. Uh, we could always kind of go around and, and pump up uh, the scale a little bit. Um, but I think that's pretty close. Uh, but as I was saying, we could always go back into that displacement node. Pump up, uh, maybe uh, this might be closer to one. And you can see as I go higher, it's pushing that up a little bit. But I've also lost this, so maybe that's too high. So let's go maybe like 0.75 or something like that. All right, it's getting not too bad. Let's try point. Six five. All right, so that's pretty good. So we got a good amount of displacement on there. And then the last thing we we applied was the uh, normal map. So the normal map is a little bit different because we're not using a file texture for that. So for the normal map, what we're doing is we're hitting tab to bring in our normal map. So normal. And there it is there, redshift normal map texture. Uh, we're going to load in the file texture here. So source images, normal, there it is. Cool. And we're going to attach it. So it just gets attached here. So we're attaching out displacement vector uh, to the bump input. Uh, that's also located under here. So under overall. So we're just dragging and dropping it into here, bump map. So it's the same thing. Um, all right, but for this to, to, to take on the UDEMs, there's no, there's no menu to click on that like we did with the other file textures. There's none of uh, this thing here, UV tiling mode. So Redshift nodes do this automatically as long as you, you just give it the proper naming convention. So you just have to go in here where it says 1001, and we're putting in the greater than and less than brackets. And in the middle, we're typing in UDEM. There we go. And that's going to then give me the proper uh, normal maps over everything. Um, and if you find that's too much or too little, you can always adjust the, the size of that here through the scale of normals. Cool. All right, there we go, that's it. So hopefully that was helpful. Yeah, I apologize for uh, that not working, although it, to a certain degree it's out of my out of my control. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this uh, to YouTube. I think I'll upload this to YouTube, and I'll give you guys the link on Slack. All right. So let me know if this was was helpful, and I'm going to end the recording there.